Hi everybody, I'm making this video right now um, to try to help you guys figure out how to make a basic rising yeast pizza dough. Um, it's a recipe that I found online after searching for a little bit trying to find one that I could maybe half the recipe so that it would be one cup of flour and it'd be easy to portion, kind of like two ingredient dough, and then it would be easier for us Weight Watchers. So that way we can cut it in quarters, know how many points it is, all that stuff. And it sounds a lot more intimidating than it really is. This is a perfect uh, little kitchen project for if you have a lot of chores you have to do because you get to start it and then step away and go pick up, in my case, after Hurricane Jesse and Rachel, who just destroyed the living room and then went off for their naps. So um, let's get started. What you're going to need, I bought a jar, but you see them in the store in little packets in the spice aisle with the bakery stuff, is Fleischmann or whatever brand, active dry yeast. And I'm leaning over right now because my phone is duct taped to a ladder. I really need to get a stand if I'm going to do more of these things because it's very inconvenient. Uh, right now I have a refrigerator magnet that's duct taped to a ladder with my phone being suspended over a tile floor. Hooray for warranties. Um, so we're going to need active dry yeast, a little bit of sugar, I'll give you all the measurements, and then a little bit of lukewarm water and some seasonings and spices if you want, but that's pretty much all there is to it. Um, so this is a halved recipe instead of a big, full-blown uh, pizza dough. So what we are going to need for this is, I'm gonna put it in a clear glass just so you can see the froth rising up and all that, and the magic of yeast, and plus your house is gonna smell like beer, so. You know, if you try to convince your spouse when they come in that you haven't been drinking, good luck with that. My wife came in yesterday and asked why the house smelled like beer and saying, oh, it's because I made bread. That doesn't fly with some people. So what we're going to need for this is a teaspoon and an eighth one and an eighth teaspoons of the active dry yeast. Looks like tiny little pellets, like fine ground sand. And then one teaspoon of regular, any type, granulated sugar. You have to have the sugar. It's what the yeast um, goes to town on. So sugar, mix it up a little bit, and I'd rather have it start off a little dry than wet and then we have to add more flour and more points and all that. So eventually we want to ideally use a half a cup of water, but right now I have three tablespoons of lukewarm, not hot or you'll kill the yeast, not cold because then it doesn't want to do anything. Just like us, we want to curl up on the couch with a blanket and watch Pride and Prejudice or something. Or if there's guys watching this video, I just watch Predator and Terminator. I don't care about Pride and Prejudice, my favorite movie. Um, so three tablespoons of lukewarm water, and that's it. Walk away for 10 minutes, do nothing. That's why this is perfect for parents or people who you have a company over, you want to go clean, in 10 minutes. We will come back, I will have the living room clean, and then this will have a frothy head. And I'll see you then. All right, everybody, it's been 10 minutes. Living room's clean. I started on the kitchen a little bit, like the good little housewife that I am. But it's been 10 minutes, so we gotta come back. I uh, wanted to show you what the difference is. So I'm gonna hold this glass up as steady as I can. Hopefully I don't mess it up. If you see the water line on the bottom, that is where the liquid started. Now we have all the foam on top. That's the frothy head. I just like saying it like that. 
Um, but those are all the bubbles that the yeast is doing. And that's going to continue going all the way until we pop it in the oven. Um, if we put it in in an hour, if we let this rise for, I got crazy one time, made a regular full batch of pizza dough and top the pizza and just let it sit for five hours and it expanded all the way to fill up an entire I think it was 22 by 11 uh, cookie baking sheet completely full and fluffy like focaccia bread so this will just keep on doing its thing but it's been 10 minutes so now we pour that into one cup of all-purpose flour. You could use gluten-free if you want, whatever. I'm just using all-purpose. One cup of all-purpose flour, and then uh, I like to season it a little bit. You can use whatever seasonings you like, but I kind of like it to taste a little bit like focaccia bread. So I put in a little salt, a little onion powder, some dried thyme. Really makes it taste like focaccia or focaccia, potato, potato, whatever. Um, garlic powder, little pepper. Not traditionally what you put in regular pizza dough, but that's how I like it. Um, so we pour the wet into the dry, and now the hard part. Uh, this is the part where it's just so hard. There it is. And we mix it up. We'll take a minute or something. Our dough, because we didn't add the full half cup of water, we did three tablespoons, might be a little dry. So I have the other tablespoon in here. We can add just a little bit if it's a little dry. And then you scrape down the sides. And you do this until it gets to the consistency of, you know, just a regular ball of dough that you would do with two ingredient dough. You want it to look just like that. And thanks to the magic of movie filmmaking, we will cut to that. Alright, we added a little bit more water, scraped the sides down. The whole purpose of doing it a little extra water at a time is we don't want it to be wet and have to add more flour. So. It's been kneading around. You can do this by hand with yourself because you don't have one of these snazzy things. So right now we have a nice ball of dough. Let me take this out and show it to you. So you have a nice little cute ball of dough. And now another fun part. Take the hook off. Again, you could do this by hand or mix it however you would prefer to. If you don't have one of these, just use a rubber spatula and a mixing bowl. And so now, we get to go do chores again. Cover this with some plastic wrap and walk away. 30 minutes, you want to walk away. 30, three, zero, not 13. So set your timer for 30 minutes and I will see you then. And it's not done. We still have 23 minutes left, but I just realized I should show you how to do the fat-free cheese hack. Hack, 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 hack. Um, pretty much my little trick, I know there's other ones out there, people spray fat-free cheese with Pam or whatever. This is just how I like to do it. Um, fat-free cheese, whether it's craft fat-free mozzarella or cheddar, shredded, kind of hard to find. Um, if you're lucky enough to find it at your local store, grab it. If not, just use the low-fat mozzarella. It's low points already, but I'm a points whore, so I like to hold on to my points and use them for cupcakes. That's how I roll. Um, but it does not melt. It sucks at it. People hate it. They avoid it like the plague. But to get this to melt properly, what we are going to do is, just for purposes of this, because we're making four 
of these little uh, pizza pot pies, I'm just gonna call them. You're gonna add three quarters of a cup of packed fat-free Kraft mozzarella. And then, da, 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 about a quarter cup of fat-free plain yogurt. You could use Greek if you want. I just like plain. I, you know, doesn't have to be Greek. It can be though. Got love for the Greek. And so, um, what we're going to do now is we are going to use our mighty claws and mix it up. That's it. So, what the yogurt is going to do is coat all of it in a little liquidy bath of love and will allow it to melt on its own the fat-free yogurt um, can get very hard in the oven bubble and then it just turns rock solid I don't know what type of voodoo Weight Watchers magic uh, causes this but when you Mix the two together, the fat-free yogurt and the uh, fat-free cheese. The yogurt starts to uh, liquefy a little bit, and before it curdles, it helps the mozzarella or the fat-free cheddar. It carries it, and it starts to melt. And, you know, it's like uh, Barry White music starts playing, they get it on, and they become one cheese. So you end up with this thick, goopy, ricotta-like mixture. And it sounds wrong, sounds weird, sounds like it goes against the laws of the natural universe, but it works. And I use this to, well I have used this to cheese an entire pan of lasagna for like uh, three or four points. For all the cheese for like all four layers and if you type hashtag uh, FF cheese hack and scroll down to my very first picture where I tried it on the lasagna you can see how it looks like real mozzarella melted on it it just it's great so this is all done now what we're going to do because this is going to be part of the filling for our little pizza pot pies I'm just gonna call it because it sounds cool is we're making four of them, so we divide this into four equal sized little yogurty cheese balls. And this is also uh, gonna be bigger because we're gonna be like mixing, you can mix some vegetables, you can mix. Um, the zero point Italian sausage recipe that I have by hashtag zero SP Italian sausage and it's my little uh, recipe for seasoning up ground turkey to mimic the flavors of Italian sausage really well to where it's a good stand-in for it. Um, in this case my wife on her two uh, and I'm making this for a second night in a row because I was threatened with risk of bodily harm because she liked this so much yesterday I was told I have to make it again which is perfect because I'm making the video so she wanted pepperoni in hers because she doesn't care about points and so on her two I just chopped up eight pieces of Hormel 70% um, fat-free turkey pepperoni mix that up into a pepperoni yogurty fat-free cheese boy that does not sound delicious when you say it like that but it will taste good and then mine because I am once again a point whore I'm making a batch of my uh, zero point um, Italian sausage so that's what's going to be in mine so there's her two and then I will, I have 16 minutes left, so I'm gonna cook up the turkey, make the Italian sausage, and then we'll check on how this is fluffing up. And so, there we go. 
See you in a couple minutes. Hi everybody, it has been um, 30 minutes, so it's just now starting to puff up a bit. Uh, the longer we leave it, the more it expands, but it's just starting to work its magic right now. Not sure if you can remember, but it has gotten a bit bigger, about increased about a quarter in size, quarter or a half. Um, so right now we're going to do what we would normally do with two ingredient dough. We're going to put it out, little flour, roll it into a ball, and section it. And that will be the next step. So, a little bit of flour. And the yeast dough gets really sticky as it expands on the side, so you might need to use a rubber spatula to get it out without letting it be destroyed too much. It's a boy! So, and there we go. We have a little dough ball. Well, that's just lightly floured. And then also, we have our four little ramekins, or any small little baking dish you got. Uh, these are little seven ounce ones um, that you do like a little souffle in or something. I got them at Ross for like two bucks each. So that's what we're going to be rolling these up, putting the filling in, and dropping them in. And so first things first, let's section this into fours. Let's move our hand. So now we have it in quarters. There we go. There's one ball. This is actually fun. I think this is the third one of these I've done now. I'm actually enjoying it. I really appreciate how Connect and all of you folks, um, even if you don't realize it, you all have pushed me to become better at this. I really enjoy cooking a lot more than I did now, and it's like a fun challenge every night. It's like a game. All right, so what we're going to do now is take one of these, and we're going to just press it out like we're making a little pizza. That a little bit. And we're going to do my wife's first and put one of the filling balls in and then just grab the dough, stretch it up and over. It's like you're making a little meatball with a filling. And there you go. You can see the little seam right there, that's going to be on the bottom. So get our cooking spray and the ramekins. In case I go walking in front of the camera um, and slip, fall, and hurt myself, you'll know why. So spray the bottom and put it right in the center. And it doesn't, you can see, it doesn't really fill it up. There's space on the sides. We'll come back in a little bit and you'll see what happens with this magic. So then we're gonna grab the next one. Add a little bit more flour. Grab the next ingredient bowl for the misses. Fold the dough up and over. Fold the dough up and over. Now close the seams. Spray the bottom. Put it in. And spray the top. We're spraying the top. And for the people who are like, you've sprayed it more than five times, that's a point. Stop it. I don't want to hear it. Get out of my kitchen. So there's my wife's two pepperoni ones. Um, while we were at commercial break, I 
um, made the zero point ground turkey Italian sausage. All the recipes po uh, posted in the post with the picture for the finished product. Um, I'll have a link to it also. But it's really good. You can scroll down, hit the zero SP Italian sausage, and learn how I make mine. I really like it. It has onion powder, garlic powder, a little bit of paprika, uh, ground fennel seed, dried basil, parsley, red wine vinegar, salt pepper. It's a full-on Italian sausage recipe. It just has some beef granules in it to help it have a little bit more flavor away from ground turkey. So with that out of the way, now I am going to add a little bit of the ground turkey to my balls. I hope Oprah doesn't come kill me for saying that or the connect police come and say you can't use the term balls. These are mozzarella, they're filling. I'm not, you know what I mean. And the nice thing about this is because the entire batch is zero points, we all know that zero points means zero calories. So you can eat all of this that you want, you won't gain a pound. Remember, your leaders are wrong. Zero points is zero calories. It's like eating flavored air. I'm joking. Don't come to my house with pitchforks and torches. All right. Next thing I do. We are on the home stretch here, folks. The next ingredient ball. Fold up the dough. Fold up the dough. Straight bottom. Pop it in. Last one. Filling. Oh, this is going to be good. I wouldn't be surprised if she tells me I have to make these for dinner again tomorrow. Which would be awesome. Alright, spray the bottom. And I'm going to leave these right here so that you can see they're. There's a little space there, and you could see how, this is it right now, how this is going to puff up. We are going to come back in another half hour, do some more chores, clean up, kick up your feet, watch a novella, eat some bonbons, I know what all of us parents do, that's it, and I'll see you in half an hour. Don't touch it, walk away, half hour. Welcome back everybody. It has been actually, I let it go an extra 15 minutes. It's been 45 minutes that these have been rising. So if you remember when I held up the dish to the camera last time, you, the dough was way under the surface. Well now, 45 minutes later, you can see it's starting to pick up now. It's risen up pretty far. And normally, um, I'm trying to cook this right now, get it in the oven because my wife's gonna get home soon. Normally, I would let these sit for a good hour and a half. It's only been 45 minutes, so after an hour and a half, it would be like a nice dome, which would be super fluffy and delicious, but it's still gonna be really good. Plus, it's gonna puff up more when it's cooking. So, I let it sit for 45 minutes. I heated up the oven to 375, and really quick, just going to spray the top. I'm going to dust these with just a tiny little bit of garlic powder because I like to have things seasoned and a little teeny bit more, a little bit of, of parsley flakes. And you might notice there's more background music. The smoke detectors went off for whatever reason. 
no idea why. And Rachel is wide awake, asking for juice and puffs. Chips. And chips. One second, sweetie. One second. And then a little bit of paprika just for color. I'm going to put the paprika, because it's red, on Lupe's pepperoni ones to help me distinguish the two. And on mine, I have a little bit of ground Italian seasoning so that ours will look different, I'll know which is the sausage, which is the pepperoni. So, I'm going to pop these on a dish. Throw them in the oven, 375 degrees for about comments from the peanut gallery. 375 degrees, uh, we're gonna do them for 17 to 22 minutes. Um, any more than that, and they're still delicious, but the shell starts to get hard on the outside. The maximum I'd let them go is 25, but usually right around 22, 23, it's pretty good. Um, and then we'll pop them out. And while we were at commercial break, I whipped together a batch of the um, zero point marinara sauce. I have a recipe for that, um, which is in the previous post and has the pictures for these. Um, my 15 minute marinara sauce. Pretty much take all the veggies. This is for, you know, if you're a working parent, you have soccer practice, you gotta get your kids to, and you want decent homemade sauce and you don't have a long time to let it simmer, which would be traditional. Um, we take all the veggies, the garlic, the onions, everything, throw it in the pot and simmer it covered with a little bit of chicken broth um, just to kind of steam them for about 10 minutes. Boiling softens everything. Toss in the two cans of uh, tomato sauce with some herbs and then bust out the immersion blender. A blender on the end of a stick. Thank you, Alton Brown. Stick it in there, puree it all up in like about a minute. Perfectly smooth marinara sauce. It takes about 15 minutes altogether. So we're going to pop these in the oven right now. And next time I see you, they will be out. All right, so they just came out of the oven. Um, these went about 22, no, 20 minutes. And then I put them under the broiler for just a minute or two, just to give them a little bit of color. And so now, take each one, just run out. After a couple minutes of letting it sit, it separates from the sides of the dish. Run a butter knife around it, and pops right up. There's one. See, they puffed up a little bit. It's a nice size. It's a nice flaky pocket. So, to plate these, take your knife. Gonna slice right down the middle of one to split it open to expose the middle. Just like that. Take a little of the marinara sauce, put it right in the middle of the dish. Take your little pizza pocket, put it in the middle. A little bit of parsley flakes or rosemary, whatever you'd like.
So it's pretty simple, um, as you can see from the um, actual how to make the dough and everything. It's great for making a pizza crust. Also, I like to make a double batch, so it's the full batch actually, where it's the two cups of flour, the two and a half, uh, and two and a quarter teaspoons of the dry active yeast, two teaspoons of the sugar, a little salt and the seasonings, let it rise and then roll it out. And it'll actually take up about half of a sheet pan. You let it sit for about an hour and it'll expand more, top it like you would a pizza, and then stay back, wait about another hour and a half, two hours, and it will expand to fill up the entire cookie sheet. Throw so that in the oven and it's a huge fluffy pizza. But that's all there is to this. Enjoy.